All right, so um, the second grade response question is similar to the one, the first one that um, we did, but it uses a table instead of a graph. So it's going to be similar methods, just using a different representation. So this graph or this um, table give, gives us the rate of change at which water leaks from a container. Um, and R is measured in gallons per hour, and this is only for one hour. So we're going to use the table to find the approximation of R prime of one half. All right. So again, this is um, an older lesson where to find R prime, an approximation for R prime, we're just going to use the slope formula. Now we need to pick some t values that one half is in between so when i did it i just went ahead and used one third and two thirds um you can use any two t values that one half falls in between so you may do this right and get a different answer than i did um anyway all right so there's my work uh, or my setup so R of one third is eight, and R of two thirds is five, and then one third minus two thirds is gonna be negative one third. So that looks like it's gonna give us three divided by negative one third, or three times negative three, which is negative nine. Um, this one just tells us to indicate the units of, show the computations, which we did, and then indicate the units of measure. So again, just a quick review. If we have gallons per hour and we find the derivative of that, we're going to divide by the independent variable, um, and our independent variable is measured in hours. So this is going to be gallons per hour per hour. Okay, so this one asks for a left Riemann sum um, with three subintervals. And so this is where, with the table, we like to do this right here. There's our three subintervals. All right, and then um, if we're doing the left Riemann sum for the first one, the left value is um, the 11. All right, so we're going to find the, we're going to approximate the integral from zero to one of R of T dt using left Riemann sum. So the left point is at 11. The width of that rectangle would be one third. So each one of these has a width of one third. Okay, and then for the next triangle, not triangle, sorry, the next rectangle, our left point is going to be 8. So plus 8 times 1 third. All right, and then for our final rectangle, our left point is going to be 5. Now, it's awesome that you guys will get to use a calculator to do this calculations, although it's it's not terribly difficult. But anyway, you can plug all that in. We end up with 8. And then we need to indicate the units of measure. And so we take, um, we take gallons per hour and we integrate it with the unit of... Um, the independent variable being hours. So because we're doing the integral, we would multiply that and that is going to give you gallons. All right. And then for the second one, the rate, I'm um, sorry, same situation. We're going to use the data in the table to evaluate the integral um, from zero to one third of our prime of TDT. All right, so this is another one very similar to what we did on the last problem where we're going to use the fundamental theorems of calculus, both of them actually. So first, if we do the integral of r prime of t, it's going to give us r of t. 
And then we're going to plug in one third and zero and then subtract. All right, and we can get r of one third and r of zero from the table. So r of one third is eight, r of zero is 11. So that's gonna give you negative three. Now it doesn't tell us to indicate the units of measure and it doesn't ask us to interpret the answer, but just to reiterate, um, these are, this is r. And R is gallons per hour, so it would be gallons per hour, negative three gallons per hour, which would mean um, between time zero and one third, the um, container leaks out three gallons of water per hour. So it would be gallons per hour. All right, and then this is some new stuff um, we haven't talked about in, during our review is representing the integral using the limit formula. So um, this is a right ream on sum, which is what we practice the most. So that's good. I'm hoping that's what they throw on the test. Um, but we have the sum um, from k equals 1 to n of r of 1 fourth plus k over 2n times 2n is a right Riemann sum with n subintervals of equal length. The limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, so that's what I'm writing right now, can be interpreted as a definite integral. So we're going to express the limit as a definite integral. So I'm just going to re review, I'm going to put it down here, um, about a Riemann sum with, inter inter with a limit. Um, so anyway, so a right Riemann sum um, we are doing the integral from a to b of f of x dx that's the same as the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation from k equals 1 to n of f of a plus delta x k times delta x and just one more note, delta x is found by subtracting your um, upper and lower limits and dividing by n. Okay, so it's kind of easy to find the delta x when you go back and look. Um, so this is delta x. or in this case, delta t, sorry. All right, so delta t is equal to one half over n, or no, I should say that, one over two n, which means the interval length is one half, okay? And then we also know that whatever is right here is A. So A is one fourth. All right, and then we can use that interval length to know what B is. So we take one fourth, we add one half to it, B is three fourths. I've written so much, it's hard to write the answer. So we're gonna say that that equals the integral from whatever a is, which is one fourth, to whatever b is, which is three fourths of r of t dt. Now, sometimes, and we're going to do one later, I think the fourth one on here, um, we actually have to plug some stuff into that. 